Welcome to Markets Now. Okay. I'm Michelle Rook with Ellen Brugler of ANN Economics. And we saw lower livestock futures cut lower. The grain futures were mixed with the feed grain sector higher soybeans lower. And let's start off talking a little bit about soybeans and the report yesterday. Obviously, um, we did not see much of a change in yield at all from USDA, but we saw a tightening of the ending stocks. Do you think that the market kind of breathed a little bit of a sigh of relief with that or not? Yeah, I think the market was was uh, pleased that it didn't get worse. All right, you you had a sort of a sell the rumor buy the fact reaction to that report. It was a they, they, those were modest changes on USDA's part for soybeans, you know, five million bushels here and there. But the uh, the bottom line is that they stuck with their existing yield number. It's a high number historically speaking. And there's some legitimate questions with the a dry finish to harvest or to the growing season and going into harvest, whether that's uh, might cause them ultimately to have to back off on the yield slightly. So a uh, little bit of a friendly uh, reaction coming out of the report. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, the weather has continued to be fairly dry here as we finish off the crop and get into harvest. From a technical standpoint, though, um, we've had now for, I think, four higher weekly closes. But today we kind of ran up into chart resistance again or not? Yeah, we've got uh, multiple layers of chart resistance because after a, a multi-month sell-off, you've got all types of uh, things you got to run back up. You got basements, you got speed. Uh, there's lots of places you could stop. And uh, of course, only one place that you actually will stop. So uh, we're getting a little bit of, of pushback uh, because we've had this nice rally over the last few weeks. But um, I'm still optimistic that we can get a little bit more of, a, of an extension here. Uh, the biggest concern is, of course, it is planting season for Brazil and Argentina. And we, we don't want to uh from from what that standpoint we don't want too big of a rally because it'll just incentivize them to plant more how concerned are you about how dry it is down in brazil and is it too early to be concerned about it i think it's too early to be concerned about it i mean they as you know they have a, a dry season and a wet season we're still uh at the tail end of the dry season right now so you know it, it's it's what they're going to get in the two or three weeks from now that's more significant than, than what we're seeing right now. I think, yes, it, it, it is a problem for early emergence if you're, if you're already planning, which they are in the center West region, but uh, <clears throat> you've got to, you got to put it in context is that uh, we've had weather concerns about Brazil and other years that just didn't pan out, you know, two, three weeks or a month later. Right. Corn market to the plus side, I know we got a little help from wheat, but we also ended up with some lower ending stocks out of the report on Thursday. Were we still trading that, do you think? I, I think there's a realization that it could get a little uh, tighter over time. Uh, USDA did raise their yield. That there's some you know, question in the trade whether that's, that's going to be there by January or not, I think. Crop condition ratings right now would say, yes, the yield could be 183 to 185. But you can also argue that with the dryness uh, that kernel in the, the, the lower ear counts, that you, the kernel fill is what's really important, and dry weather tends to impair that a little bit. So uh, the fact that market, the stocks were a little tighter and USDA was finding more export business, they raised the old crop exports another 40 million, they raised the ethanol consumption. Uh, you know, you could kind of project that forward and say maybe these prices are low enough to get a little more, more business. I, I think kind of a, a less noticed aspect of this is Argentine producers are cutting way back on corn plantings this year because of all the insect and disease problems they had last year. So uh, that's that's potentially positive down the road as well. Yeah, that certainly helps. 183.6 bushels per acre, though, is still a record yield. So it feels like we've absorbed this well. This is going to be the third higher weekly close. So the question is, are the harvest lows in? Well, I, we haven't had enough of a rally that you can really say that we've proven it. Uh, certainly, we have had harvest lows in late August, early September before, going back across history. 
It doesn't have to wait for October. The cash flow nationally typically falls around the first 10 days of October, but the board certainly can bottom early. It's, it's, it's thinking about that, but at a, on a monthly chart uh, you, and weekly chart, you do have an MACD buy signal now the, for the fast acting one, the 5917 5, version. The slower acting one, which is a little more permanent, uh, hasn't crossed over yet. So, you know, it's kind of like cross your fingers, uh, maybe the lows in. But uh, as, as I've said in other other times, other places, I we want we can we can be positive for a rally, but not want to see too much of one here uh, until uh, South America gets further along on planning. We don't want to incentivize more more acreage because we certainly don't need it when we've got a a U.S. carryover that's over 1.8 billion. You bet. So we didn't see any changes in domestic ending stocks in the report on Thursday for wheat, but we managed to have a nice rally on Friday. Was that the lower dollar or is that market, is that just part of this seasonal bottoming that we generally see? Well, I, I think that's a great question. Uh, the, certainly there is a tendency to try and bottom that wheat market in, in August or September late August, September time period, we, we may be doing that. I do like like the technical action on Chicago in that we, we spiked the uptrend line from the 2016 low and then came back above it. That's around that's now support around 545 here. Uh, that low in August was the lowest since uh, 2020. Uh, so I like the technical action. Uh, the weak dollar that you mentioned is, is a factor. We've been down for five weeks in a row here. Weaker dollar does tend to help exports. Uh, and then we've got a, a tighter supply situation developing for 2025. If you look at the world numbers, uh, you're seeing Russian production dropped. You're seeing estimates for uh, some of the uh, southern part of Europe and over into Ukraine and that area. You're seeing some of those numbers come down as well. So, you know, there's a fundamental uh, angle to this. Yeah, and you mentioned macros, so let's talk about that. Uh, the lower dollar certainly is helpful for exports. The stock market has been very volatile, but we have the Fed meeting coming up next week. Talk about the influences all those things could have here on the ag sector. Well, the, the Fed has been much, much, much discussed. The, the, the only question apparently is whether they're going to do a quarter point uh, rate cut or a 50, 50 point, a half point rate cut. Uh, we're still leaning towards the quarter right now, but uh, you know that's that's a last minute decision on the Fed's part. The indicators are sh are showing unemployment has picked up, and certain categories of, of inflation have slowed down quite a bit. Uh, the PCE and the CPI core are still above the two percent target, uh, so the Fed probably doesn't want to be too hasty in cutting rates. But uh, what's the impact if you, if if the U.S. is cutting rates? Uh, faster than the rest of the world, that'll tend to weaken the dollar. Okay, uh, there's a the, the hot money goes where the yields the best. Uh, the the rest of the world has kind of gotten ahead of the U.S. on rate cuts. Uh, EU's done a couple, Canada's done a couple, uh, but that hasn't hurt us. The dollar's still been going down, uh, so we don't want to underestimate the influence that that has on U.S. exports for third third currency buyers, you know, the, the Korean, Koreans and the Japanese and so forth. China's kind of a different situation because they manage that, that Chinese one, uh, according to what the government wants it to be. Uh, the stock market, I think, uh, is very resilient. Uh, you, you see these sell-offs and then you immediately see more money pouring in. I think there's a lot of investor money, a lot of 401k type money on the sideline that wants in uh, on dips. That's a little afraid to buy new highs. So when you get the dips, you get the get the 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 quick recovery. At least that's been the case so far this month. And uh, why why do we talk about that in a commodities discussion? Because if if the stock market were doing worse, we'd probably have a bigger flow of money coming into some of these cheap, beaten down commodities than what we're seeing. We're getting a little nibbling, but not nearly what it could be if the stock market. Uh, does its usual September, October uh, slide. Yeah, no doubt. It does impact money flow for sure. So one market that is sensitive to the stock market or the S&P anyways is the cattle market. 
Um, but we had a higher weekly close this week, and it looks like that market is trying to bottom on the cash side. Do you think we can kind of build on it? I know we had a little hiccup on Friday, but. Well, I, I think the, the big issue with cattle is, is simply, you know, that cash market and the cutouts have a, typically have a little bit of a, of a slump in, in September after the Labor Day push. Okay. You get the Labor Day weekend uh, stocking and then you get the sell through and then everybody's back in school and there's kind of a, a soft spot there in, in, the, in the beef market, which tends to be reflected in the cattle market. Uh, we, uh, to your point, though, we did bounce off the moving average support this week on on several different uh, durations of the of the charts, whether it's weekly, monthly, and daily. Uh, so good technical action there. We weren't as oversold as I'd like to see us on those reversals, so they're not quite as trustworthy. But again, it acted pretty well uh, for the week as a whole. Yeah, no doubt, especially with beaters up over eight bucks, we'll take that. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Alan Brugger with ANN Economics. That is Markets Now.